Hello world, yes, this is Eric Knowles and I'm here with my fifth and penultimate talk about all things René Lalique and today I've decided just to feature some of this sort of wide range of objects that Lalique designed in his time during the period between sort of 1907 and 1939. So starting with a pair of powder boxes um, as you can see, one is um, sort of covered with uh, powder puffs and the other one features scarab beetles. Um, both date to 1921. The one with the powder puffs, by the way, is a design that was licensed out to Cote, uh, who produced powder boxes in cardboard uh, using the same motifs. As for the, uh, the scarabs, well, this box was designed in 1921. <clears throat> which in some ways might be seen as prophetic insofar as the following year um, was the discovery of the tomb of Tutankhamun. So it looks like Rennie was uh, ahead of the game with this particular box. But what about this box? It's just a detail of the cover. And I should stress that the design is moulded on the underside of the, the boxes um, and the top is completely flat and polished. Um, but in this case, uh, putting the use of opalescence to really good use. Lalique is a master when it comes to showing um, water uh, and and waves and and uh, all manner of uh, water effects. I think he's borrowing maybe a little bit uh, from the woodblock prints uh, of Japan that have been coming into France during the, the 1870 period. But either way, it's quite magical. Um, this one is titled De Sirene. And again, it dates to 1921. So he takes this theme and he applies it uh, to dishes. And look at what about this? This is an inkwell. It's an inkwell, um, again, uh, from 1921. Uh, and it features uh, three sirens. Uh, the year before, he'd done a similar inkwell with four sirens. But for me, I think... Um, the use of three is is far more balanced and uh, you get more in the way of detail. And again, putting good use uh, to the opalescent effect. And let's see it again now on a dish. Um, and this dish from the same year, 1921. He was obviously in a, in a very sort of uh, aquatic mood that year. And uh, this one is entitled Ondines. And um, just to give you some idea. It's a dish which is about 27 centimetres. Um, I once owned a bowl in this design. Uh, didn't stay with me for very long because I've got this really expensive hobby called children. Well, I had it then anyway, that's for sure. So nothing was forever. But um, the bowl is a little bit smaller. It's around about um, 20 centimetres or thereabouts. But look at the detail. I mean, this is just magical um, in every sense of the word. And then what, what about this for a plaque? Um, it's quite late in his career. It's in the 1930s and um, known as Master Fam. And it is um, been produced. It's been produced in black glass in, in recent hours. It's been reprised, but it is quite something. Um, approximately, and it is only approximately, probably... 12 inches by 12 inches maximum. Um, but if you want them a bit smaller, then look no further if you can. Whoops, let me show that to camera. Um, because, see, I can't see it. Here we go. What you've got there is a cufflink that was um, produced in recent years uh, by Lalique. And... Um, I don't mind telling you, I think I might have prompted that particular design because I always suggested it would be ideal for cufflinks. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Let's move on to <clears throat> the box and cover here, which is, is quite quite a classic. It's quite early. Um, I think this one's around about 1918 or thereabouts. Amor Assis. And it is very sort of maybe very feminine, obviously, with this little cupid figure on the top uh, forming forming a handle. So boxes and covers, yes, um, he turns his attention to bowls. And when I say bowls, I'm talking in this case 
uh, a ball that is titled Perouche with a frieze of um, well, budgies or uh, budgery gars all the way around and um, in a rare colorway because this is an opalescent mint green and if you're looking for uh, another rarity in this colorway then have a look at this little fella because it is a little fella um ding ding don um a a turkey um and this is a um, well in english we'd say ashtray uh but the french word cendrière just sounds that little bit more uh, up market but um it probably measures around about maybe no more than three inches in height uh, so it is on a on a very small scale and if you're looking to collect uh, Lalik on a small scale on a budget then their Sondrier are well worth considering so um, what about clocks um, well this is a clockwork clock uh, known as a pendulette it's one of a series that he did and again he featured um, not, not um, siren but naiads on, on one version but this particular one um, benefits from having blue enamel here on Dell as you can see we're looking at swallows now I should point out uh, that uh, this little bedside clock um, weighs in with a height of 15 centimeters uh, but at uh, nearer 38 centimeters what about this for a clock this is a night and day clock um, introduced by Lalique in around about 1930 uh, it is uh, of a type that you normally find in two colorways one being electric blue and the other being smoky gray this one's that little bit special uh, it must be because I've never seen another uh, this is topaz and you can see it's got that browny tinge but what you cannot see is the the fact that uh, the the female figure that you can see on the left which is a relief molded on the reverse of this panel and this uh, disc uh, of glass is around about three quarters of an inch thick okay it's it's quite a heavy number uh, well that lady transluces a wonderful vibrant uh, uh, amethyst color and the male figure is depressed molded and hence you get this difference of light and shade uh, hence night and day it sits on a on a, a, a bronze sort of patinated metal base which um, houses an electric light so it gives off an ambient light um, uh, in the evening and uh, the mechanism itself is an electric mechanism uh, now um, something maybe a bit more pedestrian but Lalique did design a lot of plafonnier or ceiling lights as you can see here this one is titled Luzon um, don't ask me why with a lot of Lalique's uh, designs he gives them he gives them uh, names which you know have you thinking how on earth did he come up with that one um, but it's decorated as you can see it's molded with fruits and, and it's opalescent and it's got its original silk cores which is something that collectors like to see when it comes to early lighting now um, next is this well, it looks like a perfume bottle I know um, but it's um, it's around about well, I, I can't think. I can't think in centimeters here because I know it's about um, twelve or fourteen inches in height. It's big. Uh, it's a luminaire, and it's simply there to give an ambient light in some corner of your home. Um, it's called Pomia de. Du Let me do that one again. It's called Pomia du Japan, uh, and obviously it's taken its inspiration uh, from um, cherry blossom um, in Kyoto or wherever. And then. Uh, leaving uh, um, th that sort of lighting one side just on a grand scale um, you need something like this it's um, it's about the width of my shoulders in in diameter it's big this is boule de gui and it's made up of composite panels which are connected by loops and each of those panels is molded with uh, mistletoe um, which has been heightened with a, a green stain um, it is uh, a tour de force you need the right place to show it um, but um, just to show really the dexterity and the fertility of Lalique's imagination you know we could or I could be giving a talk six different talks just on Lalique lighting so we're just touching the surface it's the tip of the iceberg as they say uh, the same holds true 
with uh, with these. This is uh, a car mascot. As you can see, it's shown um, illuminated um, on the the bonnet of a car, or if you watch in America, the hood. And uh, this is Crisis, uh, C H R Y S I S, uh, introduced in 1931. In fact, it was probably one of the last ones to be introduced. Just to point out that the actual um, figure is illuminated by means of a dynamo. Uh, but the first uh, examples, and here's one of them, um, this is Comet, introduced in 1925. Uh, quite a dramatic uh, looking um, uh, uh, car mask in every sense of the world. Lalique designed 29 different car mascots and um, in London, uh, the main retailers were Breeze Galleries and they were based in Basel Street, just around the corner from Harrods. And they supplied the mount. And if you look very carefully on the mount here, you'll see uh, the name Breeze Galleries, not just car mascots. Uh, they were one of the main retailers in London for La Ligue, full stop. And then for the finale, it's got to be Victoire. Um, or affectionately known by most collectors as the spirit of the wind. And for my money, it doesn't get much better than this. It is the total epitome of all things Art Deco. Um, you've got this Amazonian uh, uh, face um, with this stylized streaming hair um, that gives the effect of speed. And this was the age of speed. It was the age of the, in the air, the Schneider Trophy uh, across the Atlantic. It was the blue ribbon. And if uh, we're talking motor cars, well, in uh, Britain for certain, you cannot think of those interwar years and motor cars without thinking of Brooklands. So um, a real miscellany over the last 12 minutes or so. And um, needs to say, uh, I hope you're going to join me uh, for my final uh, chat uh, on La Ligue. Uh, I'm going to be looking uh, as far away as Jersey. I'm going to be looking at the Normandy um, and I'm going to be looking at all manner of this, that and the other. So uh, once again, um, I do ask you if you'd be kind enough uh, to consider making a donation, even if it's just a pound. Um, uh, to the British Red Cross. The details are going to follow uh, on from my uh, my talk. And all the proceeds, by the way, um, are going to be um, channeled towards fighting this, uh, this evil uh, COVID-19 uh, virus. And as always, um, Eric Knoll signing off from somewhere in the Chiltern Hills in South Bucks, uh, saying, um, look after you and look after yours and stay safe. Thank you.